In this video, we'll be uh, discussing the uh, transfer function of translational mechanical system. So just like with the uh, electrical uh, system, so we have three uh, passive elements okay, so for a uh, translational mechanical system. So when you say transmit uh, translational, so we refer to a mechanical system whose uh, output displacements are uh, linear. So the three uh, passive elements for the uh, translational mechanical system so are given by uh, the following elements. So we have the okay. So we have the first element. So the spring effect. Okay. So of the uh, translational mechanical system. Okay. So the uh, relation. Okay. So the relation between the uh, applied force and the uh, displacement. Okay. So the linear displacement of the spring with respect to the applied force is given by uh, the mathematical okay mathematical equation. So force is equal to k multiplied by the displacement x. Okay, so that is in time domain. Okay, so the k so the variable k represents the spring constant. Okay, so then we took the uh, Laplace transform. Okay, so on both sides of the uh, equation, so we can arrive with the impedance. No? So that is uh, the ratio between the applied force and then uh, the, the output. No? So the uh, displacement X of S that is given by uh, K. Okay, so uh, this is similar to the uh, resistive element in an electrical circuit network. Okay, so the second element, okay, so the second element uh, in a translational mechanical system is given by the uh, friction effect. Okay, so the effect of the friction is given by the uh, viscous damper okay so which is given by or given with uh, the symbol okay so this one so the dumping effect no, of the mechanical uh, translational mechanical system so we'll have to specify what type of uh, mechanical system because we have the other type which is the rotational mechanical system so the relationship okay so between the applied force okay so to the displacement of the uh, viscous damper is given by mathematically in time domain that is uh, f of t okay so that is the applied force that is equal to the uh, viscous dumping coefficient f of v Okay, so we denote this one to be the dumping coefficient or the coefficient of friction, okay, F of V. So multiplied by the first derivative with respect to time of the variable X of T. Okay, so take note, uh, in translational mechanical system, okay, so we will be unto the relationship between the uh, applied force and the uh, displacement. So if we take the Laplace transform, okay, so when you take the Laplace transform, okay, so of this equation, okay, so we will have uh, the variable or the resulting frequency domain expression would be uh, f of v okay so then the laplace transform of uh, the, the the derivative no? so of the function 
Okay, so with zero initial condition is given by S and then multiplied by X of S, okay? So such that if we obtain the um, ratio between uh, the applied force and the displacement, so we'll have this uh, resulting expression that is F of V uh, multiplied by S, okay? So this is similar to uh, the inductive element in an electrical circuit network wherein the impedance of the inductor, that is the ratio of the applied voltage, okay, so with respect to the uh, current is, if you remember, that is S multiplied by L. So for the uh, spring, okay, so this is analogous to the uh, resistive element wherein the ratio between the voltage and current, okay, so in frequency domain is given by uh, R. So R is a constant, okay, so the resistance is constant. So K is also a uh, constant, no? So this is the spring constant. Okay, for the, the damper, so you have there the, the variable F of V, no? so the, the coefficient of, or the dumping coefficient, no? So F of V multiplied by the variable s so that is synonymous to the uh okay so the inductor okay so for the other element so we have here the mass no? so the mass of the system okay, or a mechanical system so uh okay so of course mass in uh si unit no so it's given in kilograms Okay, so the relationship between the applied force, okay, so this applied force and the uh, displacement, okay, so this is equivalent to uh, mass multiplied by the second derivative of X of T, okay. So if you take note or if you remember, so you have there the uh, equation or the uh, Newton second law. Uh, of motion that is force that is equivalent to mass multiplied by acceleration. Okay, so we're in uh, from your uh, differential calculus. So we know that the acceleration is equivalent to the second derivative. Okay, uh, this is the second derivative of the distance uh, x. Okay, so uh, this makes the force displacement uh, equation of a given mass. So that is uh, F of T, that is mass multiplied by the second derivative of X of T. Okay, so if we take no, so the Laplace transform okay, so of this expression, so we will have the expression or the resulting frequency domain expression as, so the mass, okay, so mass is constant. So same with f of v, no? so this is constant. So k here is also a constant. Okay, so mass is a constant. So the second derivative, okay, so of a function will have its Laplace transform as s squared multiplied by x of s. So if we took the ratio no? so, uh, of the force f, over x so we will have the expression m so multiplied by a square so in analyzing the translational mechanical system okay so so we will be using the uh, concept okay so uh, given by uh, newton that is uh, we sum up all the forces Okay, so the summation of all the forces no? so in a given uh, body, so that is equivalent to uh, mass multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, so, and then we will be using the derived, okay, so such that we will not be uh, taking no? so the Laplace transform, so of the uh, mechanical system elements. 
So we will be using the derived impedance that is for the spring. So we have K for the viscose damper. We have FV multiplied by S. Okay, and then for the mass, that is m s square. So we use this part here, okay, so this one, so to represent the expression mass multiplied by acceleration, okay? So take note, no? So in a translational mechanical system, so we will be focusing on the relationship between the force and then the uh, displacement. No? So such mechanical system will be applied with a linear force. Then the output of the mechanical system or the translational mechanical system would be the linear displacement denoted by uh, X of T. Okay. So what will we do no? so to analyze the uh, translational mechanical system. So if you remember in electrical circuits, no? so we use no? so the concept or the theory presented by uh, Kirchhoff's law. No? So that is the KVL and the KCL. Okay, so in a translational mechanical system or mechanical system, so we use, no, so the, as mentioned a while ago, so we use the uh, Newton second law, that is uh, summation of the forces that is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration. So what we will be doing here is that uh, we will be having the what we so-called free body diagram of the uh, object and then uh, we indicate no? so the uh, forces uh, that might be reacting okay so to the given uh, body so it is very important okay so it is very important to uh, identify so as to the direction of the force okay so that is being uh, what you call this one uh, attached no so or uh, felt by the uh, body okay so now for the okay so for the uh, translational mechanical system okay so okay so for translational mechanical system so we have here the term, okay, so uh, degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom in a mechanical system is the number of equations, okay, so of motion required, okay. Uh, okay, the number of equations of motion required, so that is equal to the number of linearly independent motion. Okay, so let me continue. So linear independence implies that a point of motion in a system can still move if all other points of motion are held still. Okay, so so we can associate, okay, so we can associate the number or the term degrees of freedom so to the number of linearly independent motions in a given uh, mechanical system. So for example, in a given translational mechanical system, we have two masses, okay, so denoted by M1 and M2. Okay, so uh, attached, no? So take note, no? So there are uh, the mechanical system elements, okay, so attached to the uh, masses. So for uh, mass one, so you have there the spring, the viscous damper, the another spring. Okay, so to mass two, so you have there the viscous damper and then the uh, spring and then another spring uh, K3. Okay, so on the right side. So the uh, given mechanical system will have two. Okay, so two degrees of freedom. So why do we 
have two degrees of freedom. Okay, so that is if we try to read. Okay, so the above uh, statements. No, so now if we denote mass two. Okay, so if we denote uh, mass two to be steady. Okay, so that is uh, if we held this one to be steady, then we can still move uh, mass one. Okay. So, on the other hand, if we held mass 1, okay, so this part here to be steady, then we can still move uh, mass 2. Okay, so then therefore, the given mechanical system will have 2 degrees of freedom. Okay, so from this definition, okay, so we have... Uh, Okay, so we have um, linear independence implies that a point of motion in a system can uh, still move, no? So, can still move if all other points of motion are held still. Okay, so, so since we have uh, two uh, motions that can be... Uh, set no so with one of the okay so with one of the element is being uh, or while the other no so while the other element is being held still so that is if we held still uh, mass two so mass one can still move okay so you have there uh, the first no? so the first uh, equation of motion that can be made. Okay, so secondly, if we held, no, so if we held mass 1 to be steady, so we can move mass 2, then therefore, we can have the second uh, equation of motion. Okay, so therefore, the system implies that it has two degrees of freedom. Okay, so now, how do we analyze, uh, again, a uh, translational mechanical system? So, first is we try to uh, draw the free body diagram, okay, so of the, or uh, we draw the free body diagram of the component that is uh, moving while the other is held, uh, stationary okay so just like for this one okay so if we let no so assuming that uh, we let okay so if we let uh, mass 2 no so to be stationary okay so Okay, so if we let mass 2 to be stationary, then we have mass 1 to be moving. Okay, so to write the uh, expression, no, so or the free body diagram of mass 1, we'll have to indicate. Okay, so you will have to indicate as to uh, what are the forces, no, so uh, being. Uh, experienced no, or felt by uh, mass one while it is moving okay so uh, if we draw no so the free body diagram of uh, both the uh, okay so the masses no so in the given uh, mechanical system so try to okay so try to observe no so what will happen Okay, so we let, okay, so, so we let uh, mass 2 to be stationary while mass 1 is moving. So in this case, we need to have the free body diagram of both 
okay, free body diagram for both of the masses. Okay, so you have their uh, mass number one denoted by M1. Okay, then uh, you will also have the free body diagram denoted by M2. Okay, so in this discussion, uh, we denote the red one to be the uh, body held stationary while the black uh, colored mass indicates that it is moving. Okay, or it can be represented by the displacement. Okay, so mass one, since this is moving, so it will have a displacement denoted by uh, x1 of t. So whereas uh, mass 2 will not have or mass 2 no? so, uh, will not be indicated with any displacement because it is held uh, stationary. Okay. So for mass 1, okay, so take note that uh, for mass number 1, okay, so let me, okay, so... Okay, so let's try to take a look back. Okay, so as to the original um, system. So as you can see, when we move, no, so when we move uh, mass one, okay, so take a look at what will happen. So if we move mass one to the right, okay, so in the direction of x1. So the spring, which is attached, no? so, so try to recall the concept no? so in your uh, statics of rigid bodies. Okay, so the concept of tension and compression. Okay, so if we move mass one, so the spring, okay, so this one, if we move it or if we move mass one to the right, the spring with uh, coefficient uh, spring constant k1 so we'll have an effect no? so so if you try to take a look with respect to this wall so this spring will tend to have uh, the uh, tension effect no so that is uh, the force will be directed okay So if you try to take a look at this one, so the spring with respect to this wall will have a tensile effect, okay? But with respect to M1, okay? So this spring will have an effect of uh, this one, no? Ten, still a tensile effect, but then it will be directed uh, away, no? So from mass one. So since this is held stationary, so if we move, no, so if we move uh, the okay mass one to the right side, so the coefficient or the dumping coefficient with respect to okay, so mass two, so mass two will uh, somehow be pushed by the uh, dumping effect, no? So, I mean, these elements, the spring and the dumping effect. So, the dumping effect for mass number two. So, we'll have this direction. Okay, so the spring will also tend to push mass two. Okay, so to the right. So, the direction would be this one. However, if we try to take a look, okay, so with respect to M1, the uh, dumping coefficient no or the damper so this will be compressed no so in the middle that is the effect of the force with respect to mass 2 for the damper would be so this one okay so and then for the spring the same thing as with the damper no so it will be somehow compressed no in the middle between m1 and m2 
So the direction of the force uh, given by the spring is with respect to M1 will be in this direction. So you notice that the forces, no? so the forces or the direction of the forces uh, indicated in both of the masses uh, actually follows uh, Newton's third law, no? so which is the... Um, Okay, so we have the Newton's third law, so uh, that is the law of uh, action and uh, reaction, okay? So for the uh, M1, if this is moving, so the effect no? so, uh, of M1 is uh, in this direction okay, for the viscous damper. Okay, but for mass number two, the effect of the uh, viscous damper will be uh, in the other uh, direction. Okay, so this is how we indicate the uh, forces no? so, uh, felt or experienced by uh, the mass no? so when moved. Okay, so we will be using the concept. Okay, so... Uh, to designate the direction no? so of the uh, forces okay, so experienced by a moving okay, so body. So, uh, so let's go back no? so to the uh, discussion no? so uh, unto the uh, free body diagram no? so of the masses while okay so while we held mass one no so and then okay so while m2 is okay so we held m2 okay to be okay so that is correct now so we held m2 to be stationary while mass one is moving, okay. So if you try to take a look, no, so the mass one or for the mass one, since it is uh, moving, so the effect, no, so the effect of the spring, okay, so that is uh, given by K1 for the friction between the, okay, mass one and the, uh, body no so uh, beneath uh, mass one okay or the friction between the mass one and the floor so you will have their uh, so due to the spring by the way so that is given by k1 Okay, so that is, okay, so we'll try to write it this way, okay, so for the spring, so you have the uh, K1, X1, okay, so remember the relationship between the force and the spring, okay, I mean the force and the displacement, okay, for a spring element that is uh, K1 multiplied by the displacement or the spring constant multiplied by the displacement. Okay, so then for uh, the friction, no? so in between the floor and the mass one, okay, so you have the, okay, so this one, okay, so, okay, so you have this part here, okay, so this one, so you have their F1, no? So that is okay. Okay, so we can have uh, so again let us go back to the original um, okay so you have the F1, I mean FV1, uh, F of T. 
Okay, so FV3, K2, K3, then FV2, no? So, so these are the elements now attached to the masses. Okay, so, okay, so we have, okay, so you have the uh, F1V, okay, so, or uh, basically that's FV1. Okay, so you have their FV1 multiplied by SX1. Okay, so the spring or the dumping effect, no? So in between mass 1 and mass 2, so you will have here um, FV2 S multiplied by X1, no? So and then for the spring, so it will have this direction that is... Uh, K2 multiplied by X1. So again, we do not write, no? So we do not write uh, X1 of S, no? So to avoid confusion uh, as to it is a function or being multiplied, no? So now for mass 2, okay, so for mass 2, so recall that the damper no so the damper is in between mass 1 and mass 2 so therefore if we move mass 1 so a force because of the movement of mass 1 will also be reflected uh, to mass 2 because you have there the two elements connecting mass 1 and mass 2 so for mass 2 so the damper will have the opposite effect no so that is uh, F V2 multiplied by X1 and also in this uh, direction, so you have the K2 multiplied by uh, X1 and also do not forget that the applied force, no? so the applied force is in mass number 1, so you have the F, no? so okay, so the second uh, scenario would be uh, we let, no? So, of course, we do not reflect the spring in mass number two here because this is assumed to be uh, stationary. That means this will not move even though we let mass one to be moving. So, in the second case, we have mass one to be Okay, so mass want to be uh, moving. Okay, sorry, stationary. So while, uh, okay, so while we have mass to moving. Okay, so this time we, okay, so again, we let the red colored uh, mass, no? So to be the, Okay, so this would be mass 1 and then the other one would be uh, mass 2. So the black colored uh, mass will be denoted to be the one moving or uh, it will be denoted as moving because of the, uh, okay, so this would be x1 of s in s domain. So this would be x2 of s. No? So, so this arrow represents the direction. No? So, so the displacement of mass 2, if this is moving, is given by x2 of s. No? So again, if we let mass 2 to be moving, okay, so if we move mass 2 to the right, so the spring, okay, uh, the spring, which is uh, on the... Uh, right side no so of the mass 2 so we'll have an effect no so okay so this should be okay so this should be uh, k3 so that is uh, x2 for the damper okay so the dumping coefficient okay so take note there is a damper and the spring in between so the damper Okay, so we'll have 
the direction okay or the effect no so if you try to uh, recall uh, in your uh, static subject no so when we let no so mass 1 to be stationary and then we pull mass 2 to the okay so to the uh, right side so the effect of the spring and the damper will be uh, they will be somehow uh, be elongated no so uh, they will be somehow uh, be like uh, a body that is being stretched okay so the effect of the damper and the spring to mass two moving to the right is that the damper will have an effect no? so uh, which is no? so uh, or the or it will have no so a direction which is opposite no to the applied force so you have the um, f2 fv2 no so but the displacement this time is x2 okay so so this would be uh, fv2 S multiplied by X2. So for the spring, so you will have the uh, K2 multiplied by X2. Similarly, on the mass one, okay, so since the spring and damper is connected in between, no? so mass one and mass two, if we move mass two to the right, so the spring and the damper will tend to pull mass 1 also to the right. No? So therefore, the direction of the force experienced by mass 1 due to the dumping and the spring effect so are given by, no? so you have the FV2, okay, so multiplied by, okay, so that is FV2S. Okay, so... So you have their FV2, S multiplied by X2, and then you have their, for the spring, so you have their uh, K2 multiplied by X2. So after which, okay, so after the uh, drawing of the free body diagrams indicating the force experienced by each body, Okay, so we then sum up no so the forces using Newton's second law. No, so uh, you have there. Okay, so uh, summation of forces. Okay, so that is mass multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, so if we try to take a look at mass number one. Okay, so we denote. Uh, Forces going to the right to be positive in sign and forces going to the left to be negative, okay, so in sign. So for uh, mass number one, okay, so we sum up all of the forces. No? So if you try to observe, no, so this mass number one, okay, so we'll have another. So mass number one, also this mass number one here, so we can have. Uh, force, okay, so plus, okay, so you have the uh, FV2, S multiplied by X2, then plus uh, K2 multiplied by X2, and then minus, no, so minus uh, this 3, no, so I mean 4. So by the way, we forgot no, so that there is still okay, so a force or the friction no, so in between the okay, the floor and the mass two. No, so we denote this one to be okay, so in this direction, so that is FV three S that would be X2. Okay, so that would be minus no, so the forces going to the left, no, so that is Okay, so for mass one, that is, uh, you have the, 
Okay, so you have the Okay, so uh, FV1 Okay, so S plus FV2 S, no? So plus uh, K1 plus K2 Okay, so multiplied by X1, no? So that is equivalent to mass M1 S square X1. So mass multiplied by acceleration when we took no, so the Laplace transform. So that this would be the resulting expression. Okay, so as given from the table no, so in the previous slide. So that is M1 S square X1. Again, take note, acceleration is the second derivative no, so of the displacement. When we took the Laplace transform, that is S square multiplied by the displacement. So in this case, so the displacement of M1 is X1, okay? So uh, this is for, or we denote this one to be uh, equation one. For equation two, so we sum up all the forces, no? So in mass number two, so that is, so we have two forces, no? So which are going to the right, no? So or in the direction, no? So going to the right, that is, you have there, uh, FV2, okay, so X1 plus you have the K2, no, so that is X1, and then minus the sum of the forces going to the left, no, so that is uh, you have the FV2, okay, so that is uh, X2 plus, no, so, or simply you can factor out X2, okay. So F V two S no so plus uh, F V three S plus uh, K two plus K three multiplied by X two no so this is equivalent to uh, mass multiplied by acceleration so you have the M two S square the direction is X two and then you have the equation two. So just like in electrical system, you can use Kramer's rule to obtain the expression no? so of the given transfer function so using the equations form. Okay. So we will try to apply the concept no? so to the given. No? So given uh, mechanical, no? so mechanical system to so this one. So we, okay, so we are asked not to find the transfer function x2 over f, okay. So x2 is the displacement of this mechanical system, okay, so the outside, no, so, and then x1 is the displacement, no, so of the uh, mass which is inside the, uh, mass 2. No? So, so if I were you, so kindly uh, take no, so a picture of the given uh, mechanical system. Okay, so uh, for us to have, no, so for us to have a, a picture of it, no, so as we uh, continue, no, so to the next uh, slides. Okay, so okay. So we are then now ready to obtain no so the transfer function. Okay, so of the uh, given no so translational mechanical system. Okay, so. So the mechanical system no so has uh, two degrees of freedom okay so we let no so mass 1 so just like what we have done in the previous slide so we let uh, one uh, body no so to be moving at the same time 
So mass one moving uh, M2 uh, stationary. So so hopefully you have the picture no? so of the given okay so translational mechanical system is okay, so all the coefficients no or the value of the coefficients are uh, in the okay are provided no so in the given uh, mechanical system so if we let mass one to be moving okay so we have here no so so this would be mass one okay so uh, that is uh, M1 that is equal to 1, no? And then the other one is so uh, Okay, so this would be mass 2. Okay, so the displacement of mass one is denoted by x one of s. Okay, so so while mass two, so we do not denote no, so or we do not indicate the uh, displacement because this is stationary. Okay, so for mass one, so the forces acting on mass one are given by no, so the following. So you have there the applied force. So that is uh, F, okay? So in between this upper part and this part here, no? so you have there the uh, friction effect. No? So the direction of the force or the friction force or the dumping, uh, okay. Uh, FV1 is in this direction, okay, so that is uh, FV1, that is 1, so this would be uh, SX1, okay, and also uh, below, so you have the, the coefficient or the dumping coefficient, which is also equal to 1, so the direction is here, so this would be uh, S X one. Okay, so we're in F V is equal to one. Okay, so for the spring, okay, so the spring which is connected to mass one and mass two. Okay, so you have there for the spring that is uh, equal to K, so which is also equal to one. So this would be X one. And then we also have the uh, damper here denoted by FV3. No? So, so this should be, uh, or this will have a direction. Okay, so FV3 is equal to 1, so you have SX1. So with respect to mass 2, okay, so the force that mass 2 will experience because of the movement of mass number 1 or mass 1 are so the uh, dumping coefficient no so or the friction so at the top and the bottom so based on newton's uh, action and reaction no so law so the direction of the uh, force experienced by mass 2 will be opposite to that experience of mass 1. No? So we have here, okay, so this would be S X1. And then at the bottom, so you have there, still opposite, no? so they have their S X1. And then for this spring, so it will be opposite, that is uh, X1. Okay, so for the damper, that would be opposite, shall we say, uh, as x1. Okay, so these are the forces no, experienced by the two masses. No? So when we let mass 1 moving while mass 2 is uh, stationary. So the next one, 
Okay, so, so by the way, uh, there is a simple rule, no? So, on how do we indicate, no? So, the forces, no? So, for the body that is moving, okay? So, if you try to take a look, so the force experienced by the body because of the uh, spring and the damper, so will always be opposite, no? So, to the direction of the uh, or the direction of the movement of the body. For example, you have there the dumping effect, dumping effect, the spring, and then the damper also. So with respect to the moving body, so all the uh, effect no? so of the forces will be in opposite direction with the applied force. I mean the direction. No? Okay, so but to the body that is uh, stationary, so the counterpart no so or the force experienced by the stationary body will be uh, of course opposite no so to the one experienced by the moving body okay so and then you will have also to take note that for the stationary body so you only have to indicate no so the uh, force that is due to the uh, common elements attached to the, uh, for example, mass one and mass two. So do not indicate in the stationary body to so those elements which are not connected to the moving body. Okay, so now we move to the second phase that is if we let, no? so uh, we let uh, mass one to be stationary this time and then uh, mass two to be moving okay so for mass one so we use this red uh, color okay, to denote that this is stationary Okay, and then we'll have mass 2 to be moving. Okay, so this will be mass 2. Okay, so and then it will have a movement of x2 of s okay so again hopefully you have the picture no so of the given uh, mechanical system so we're in the first no mass 2 is equal to 2 uh, kilograms okay so if we move no mass 2 to the right so the following would be the Force experienced by mass two, no. So you have we have the dumping effect, no. So in between mass one and mass two, okay. So in this side, okay. So as mentioned uh, a while ago, so if it is in reference to the moving body, so the direction, no. So of the force experienced by that moving body because of the spring or damper will be opposite no so you have or we have no so um x2 okay s x2 so also we have the dumping effect no so at the bottom okay so this would be s x2 no and for the spring so you have the uh x Okay, so this would be x2, k is equal to 1, okay, and then you have the fv3, so this would be s x2, no? And then take note that uh, outside, no, so of mass number 2, or mass 2, so we have the uh, coefficient, no, so our dumping coefficient between the... Uh, mass 2 and the floor no so you have their uh, fv4 that is sx2 
So take note, this is for the floor and the, okay, so the floor and the uh, mass number two. So this part here will not be indicated in mass number one because mass number one didn't touch no, so the floor okay, or the base. So for mass number one, okay, so you have there, okay. So you have there the following, no? so okay. So this would be uh, S X two. So corresponding to this force, so you have the S X two. Corresponding to this, no? so two forces, no? so you have there uh, X two, and then you have the S X two. Okay, so we are now ready to sum up. No, so the forces experienced by the uh, two bodies. Okay, so for mass one, okay, so we have there for mass one. Okay, so we sum up no summation of the forces that is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration. So take note, mass one is equal to one. So all forces, no, so going to the right, no, so will be denoted uh, uh, a positive sign. So you have there these four forces, no. So that is okay. So you have there three uh, s, okay, plus one. So multiplied by x two, no. So you can add this one, okay, so this one and this one, so that will result to 3s factoring x2, so you will have 3s plus 1 multiplied by x2, no? And then, of course, no, so plus, okay, so this would be plus f, no? So this applied force, and then that would be minus, no? So all the forces, no, so going to the or all the forces, no? So which has the direction going to the left, no? So you have there uh, another, okay? So you have there 3S plus 1, no? So multiplied by X1, okay? So that is equivalent to mass, that is 1, Okay, so Laplace transform no, of the acceleration is x, uh, I mean s square, so multiplied by the displacement x1. Okay, so such that we can have, no, so we can have the following uh, notation, or we can simplify, no, so the given expression as. So that is, okay, so this would be, uh, S square, okay, so plus 3S plus 1, okay, so multiplied by X1, okay, minus 3S plus 1 multiplied by X2, no, so that is equivalent to F. So we denote this to be equation number 1, no, and then for M2, Okay, so again, we use summation of all forces no? so acting on M2 that is equivalent to mass multiplied by the acceleration. No? So if you try to take a look, no? so for M2, so you have there the four forces no? so which are going to the right. No? So we have there, okay, uh, 3S, okay, so plus 1 multiplied by x1, okay? And then in this part here, so you have the uh, minus, no? So you have the 4s, okay? So plus 1, okay? So multiplied by x2, no? So that would be equal to 0. Sorry, not zero, but okay. Uh, it's not zero, but mass multiplied by acceleration. Okay, so mass is equal to two. 
Okay, so S square and then uh, X2, no? So to simplify, so you have there uh, 3S plus 1 multiplied by X1, no? So minus uh, 2S square plus 4S plus 1 multiplied by X2. Okay, so this is equal to 0. So we denote this one to be equation 2. Okay, so take note that the problem is asking for the transfer function. No? So transfer function uh, g of s that is equivalent to x2 over f. Okay, so we'll try to find any mathematical means. Okay, so for us to arrive. Uh, the expression uh, x2 uh, over f. No? So, okay. So, kindly have, no? so kindly have a picture of the equations. No? So, such that when we move to the next okay, so slide, so we will not be Okay. So So we use uh, Kramer's rule to determine no? so Okay. So we use, no, so we can calculate, no, so uh, we can have x2. That is uh, dx2, no, so divided by d, no. So what is dx2? So uh, this is the determinant no so okay so using equations one and two so uh, we let we let no so the coefficients of x1 no to remain uh, stationary i mean to remain uh, as is no so we have the or we copy no so the the coefficients no of x1 so we have here um S square, okay, so plus 3S plus 1, okay. And then for equation number 2, so we have the 3S plus 1, okay. And then for uh, dx2, so we write the constant, no? so the constants of the equations coming from 1 and 2. So in this column, so you have the... Uh, F, no? And then the other one, zero. Okay? So, okay, for D, okay, the determinant D, so this is the determinant, no? So, of the coefficients uh, or the coefficients, no? In X1 and X2, no? So, uh, we have there uh, S square plus 3s plus 1 and then 3s plus 1 so we have here okay so a negative of no so this would be 3s plus 1 and then we have here negative of okay so 2s square plus 4s plus 1. Okay. So, we try to calculate. Okay. So, again, we use the, uh, we're using Kramer's rule, no? So, we multiply in that direction. So, that's positive. And then, this would be uh, negative. So, the same thing. We multiply that in that direction. So, that is uh, positive. And then, this would be negative in this direction. 
Okay, so such that we can come up with, no? So, okay, so let's continue it here. So you have the X2 that is equivalent to. Okay, so let's try to multiply, no? So that's zero minus, no? So F multiplied by 3S plus one. And in the denominator, Okay, so, so this will be uh, a long one. No? So you have the s square plus 3s plus 1. Okay, so multiplied by okay, so plus 1. And then minus Okay, so that's 3s plus 1 square. Okay, so this would be uh, positive now. Okay, so because you have the uh, negative and then the product of this one is uh, negative, no? So you have the... So... Okay. So we multiply first, no? So uh, s square plus... 3s plus 1 multiplied with um, 2s square plus 4s plus 1. Okay, so we simply start with, no? so multiplying here, so we have uh, 2s to the power of 4. Okay, so uh, you multiply, no? so you distribute s square first, no? and then you have there plus 4s cubed. Okay, so plus square no and then 3s after no so that would be plus uh, 6 s cube okay and then plus 12 s square no so okay and then uh, plus 3s okay and then 1 Okay, so plus 2s square. Okay, so plus uh, 4s plus 1. Okay, so simplifying, so we have Okay, so we have here Okay, so we'll take a look at the uh, terms, no? So involving S4, so we only have 2S4, no? So such that we have the 2S4 for cube, S cube, no? So we have 4S cube, 6S cube, and nothing else, okay? So... You have the plus 10 s cube, no? And then with terms involving s square, so you have the s square, 12 s square, no? So and then 2. Okay, so this would be equal to. Okay, so. Uh, 1, 13, 15. Okay, and then terms involving S, so you have there plus 7S plus 1. Okay, so on the other hand, so we have uh, 3S plus 1 square that is uh, 9s square plus uh, 6s plus 1. Okay, so we are now ready to write, no? So the final expression of the transfer function that is, okay, so negative of, no? So that is f multiplied by 3s plus 1. Okay, so and then this would be negative of 
Okay, so uh, negative 2s4. Okay, so because of negative sign here and then uh, minus 10s cubed. Okay, so negative 15 plus 9. So that is uh, negative 6 s square no negative 7 s plus 6 s so that is negative s and then negative 1 okay so negative 1 uh, plus 1 so that would be 0 okay so we can cancel out negative no so by okay so we can have x2 so that is okay so we can cancel out the negative sign of f, no? So that is uh, f multiplied by 3s plus 1. So divided by uh, 2s to the power of 4, okay? So plus 10s cubed plus 6s square, okay? So plus s, okay? Such that we can have the transfer function of the given system as uh, x2 divided by f. No? So th this is equivalent to so 3s plus 1. Okay, so divided by uh, 2s no? so to the power of 4 plus 10s cubed plus 6s plus, okay. Okay, so this would be the transfer function of the given uh, mechanical system, no? translational mechanical system. So you have there 3s plus 1, okay, so over 2s to the power of 4 plus 10s cubed plus 6s squared. No? So we forgot to have s squared, okay, and then plus s. Okay, so this... Uh, okay, so the process of obtaining not so the transfer function of a uh, translational mechanical system so would be the same, no? So, regardless of uh, how many degrees of freedom uh, you have in your uh, mechanical system.